Welcome to the real episode one of this Let's Play series of Shadow Empire with the Oceania DLC. My name is Daz Tactic. Welcome to the channel. Um, before I get started, a, a massive thank you to my Patreon supporters or anyone that does support the channel through, uh, through uh, like, you know, whether it be merchandise like this, for example, or <laughs> anything else. Um, thanks, guys. It's uh, very, very much appreciated and very humbling. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. Uh, Anyway, why are we restarting? We're restarting for a number of different reasons, and this is actually not my first restart. This is my second restart. I actually recorded, I think I recorded nine episodes in the first in the first one that I had started to upload. Uh, I had only uploaded episode zero and episode one. Episode zero is still relevant. Episode one is no longer going to be relevant, but I'll keep it up there anyway. I go through in a lot of detail how to play the first turn. Um, episode, the second, the first run around was actually using version 1.20B. We're now up to version 1.20I. Um, so yesterday I started to record again after launch where it was 1.20H. And uh, so it's only one one more than that one. So that so yesterday was fine, except that I had started on a planet with with a, a ma another major player, uh, sorry, on a, on an island with another major player, and it meant that the whole game at the for my recording got bogged down fighting uh, just the major. So it was ended up. I was already at, at like another nine episodes in and had not even looked at the ocean. So I want to I want to play a world where we where we have to make interaction with the ocean early because we are dealing with Oceania. So I met it look a fun fun game like the one I was playing yesterday, really really enjoying it, but it's not what you guys are here to see. You're here to see Oceania DLC content, and so we need to find a planet that forces that. So we're going to be restarting. The first uh, game that I was playing did actually have what I wanted, except that the early version of the game was much too aggressive with uh, Marauder invasions, and so it really bogged me down. So I didn't get much done in that particular one. I mean, I could, I'm sort of tempted to go back there, but it's it, the, there's so much changes that have happened um, since that since I started recording that series. So I, I just want to start again. I also love starting again in this game. It's just any excuse to generate another world. Let's go and start a new game here. I'll try to get through this one fairly quickly. I've done an explanation on what to look for with different things. So we're just going to go and I'll just go straight to what I want. I want a small Oceania, Kathy's class, because I want the split up little islands. Uh, the only thing I've got turned on is spread out. Go continue. Uh, I'm going to go complete after colonization. Um, tech level four. You can pause this and have a look and see what I've got. Just on regular at this stage, just so I can get through and, and sort of you know, know that I'm going to be able to expand and show you things. Just go continue. 34, 1.4. I'll. Um, it's not going to matter that much. The 1.4 can mean more mountains, but we are playing playing with little islands. I might just do another reroll. 1.8 at 42. I'm looking at the temperature and the planetary age, 36. I'm just trying to get something that's a bit bit colder. Uh, 26 at 1.6, 29, 50, 20 at 2.3. Perfect. That'll do us. So this one is. Um, yeah. Anyway, we'll just roll through. <laughs> just go continue. This is now the. This is the most important of the screen. 79% is good. Lots of mountains though. So let's have a quick look. Is it fragmented? And yes and no, there's a big landmass in here. What I don't want to be doing is getting caught up on a massive island like this. I want them all really split up. So I'm just going to keep on re-rolling until I get what I want. Yeah, so what I'm looking for here is lots of little islands. Now, there's a big island that runs all the way through there. There's a, a, a largish island that runs through there. Uh, the other islands are okay. So hopefully we start on one where this, we're on our own or with a, with a minor. I don't, if we end up with another, another major, I'm not going to be able to show the DLC, but I'll, I'll try to find excuses to use the DLC anyway. Like it's, um, and look, it's, there's no problem with, the, with, you know, starting on these other, other land masses. As I say, I had a great, great time uh, in both the runs that I was doing, but they were like focused in different ways. That's one thing I love about Shadow Empire. It does change around all the time. Uh, so this is going to be okay. Let's just go back to random. We'll continue on. Now, two, to two meters per second makes it sound like it's not going to be all that great. We've got this, an aquatic seven meter carnivore. Uh, we've got uh, cloud forest, which means it's going to be lots and lots of jungles, which means that invasions are going to be hard. Um, God, how much jungle is there on this world? 
it's very jungly around the around the coastlines, which means that landings are going to be a tough as anything. Tough as old shoe leather, uh, this particular planet, because of the jungles and the and the heavy forest. Um, <clears throat> that's going to be not impossible, but it's going to be right, right up there um, to to invade. So I think I'm going to go. I, th I don't know if that's been tweaked backwards a little bit to make it a little bit more easy to actually invade. But I'm, let's just re-roll until we don't don't get cloud forests in here. There's another cloud forest one. Uh, just keep on going. Just keep on re-rolling. Uh, forests. Now we're still getting some jungles. It's a bit more open, slightly, but still very prevalent. And this is based on the rainfall that we sort of saw in the previous screen. Um, the, I think the rainfall is the white number that we saw. So there's a lot of rainfall that is, like there's certain little areas that are going to be fine. Um, xenon oxygen, this is insidious. There's no xenobiological hazard. There's no atmospheric farming hazard either. Uh, alien tissue nutrition is reduced value. So uh, look, at, we've got a two meter carnivore as the uh, is the top of the evolutionary life form. I think we maybe we just go with this one. It's uh, the forests aren't as dense as what we've seen on the previous generation. So let's just go continue. <clears throat> Only 0.8 million. I think we'll re-roll a bit more than that. <laughs> Just a little bit more, just so we end up with a, uh, a bit more. There's only six zones in, on the planet. Let's just re-roll. That is tiny. <laughs> That'll do. Um, we've got agriculture, mining, and services in 20 zones. That sounds that sounds reasonable. Let's continue with that one. I'm just rattling through this. I'm not spending much time looking at anything. We'll have a look at that as we get into the actual game itself. 1.3 million. It's divided between farmers and scavengers. Uh, raiders are more going to be like pirates, uh, but this is actually okay. So we're going to have things to take over, which is good. So we'll just go continue, and we'll start the game. Three major regimes, 12 minor regimes. Perfect. This, is, this sounds great. Um, <clears throat> so I think we're okay there. The uh, air pressure is 309, so it's around about 50-50. That means aircraft won't be all that viable, which is actually a good thing. I didn't want them to too much. The previous game that I was starting to play, the, my, air, my, my aircraft were as powerful as anything on the planet. So, uh, as, you know, so in that case, it was not really all that viable for me to continue on. As in, I should explain that, as in um, I was relying on them more than what I would be relying on the maritime trade houses. So I, I, again, I want this to promote the Oceania DLC and, and sort of go through how to make use of it. So we, want, we don't want super strong air forces in that case. We'll start as the Dasquatica Empire. We'll go with Prime Tactician as the, uh, as the name. Um, that's all now done. We're just going to go with Government. Actually, no, I'll, go with, I'll go with commerce because we'll try to be more of a commercial entity. Uh, we'll go with uh, heart and through here and we'll go with meritocracy. There we are. Let's just rattle through this fantastic card to get at the very, very start of the game. Exactly what we want. Um, that, that, um, I'll try to explain why certain things are good. Industrial points usually mean money, ultimately, when you're playing in this Oceania DLC, because the maritime trade houses will buy excess if they've got money. And in fact, that's the reason I didn't, I've, I've recorded this as, a, I think I said twice now. The second one, the maritime trade houses had no money, which meant that they couldn't invest in, in me and, uh, and I couldn't afford to invest in them either. So it ended up being a situation where uh, the whole planet was very, very poor, and that was fine. It was actually fun to play, but it wasn't fun. It wasn't good to show off what the maritime trade houses do. Again, I love the wildness of the uh, of the parameters that, that can actually happen with a planet. Uh, so, Ascension Speech. Wow, he hates democracy. He hates it. This is the commander of the first SHQ. Alistair Deepmate. Okay, well, we'll just go in that case. We'll go with uh, meritocracy. Although, he's in 70... One, I think I'll actually go autocracy in this case. Right to uh, Steel League demands you hire the candidate. Yep, no problem. And we have a new organisation. Now, pretty much, it's a bit of a no-brainer to always just go and get the um, uh, the 
um, what am I trying to say, to, to go and grab uh, the uh, economic um, organisation, the, the, uh, the council. Uh, but it, not always, but in, you know, in most cases, that will be what you want to have. Now, if we just go and delete this for once, uh, sorry, I'll just go and dismiss that one, dismiss that one. Yeah, so here we are. We have a port way down the bottom through here, a privately run port. So we'll just have a bit of a look around. So we've got a uh, private port. The important thing is here is that it is, it is picking up a little bit of food, 50 food, and we are getting 400 port points. So I'll explain what's going on with this. This is new in the game. So this is the one new building that you do end up getting. Now... You can see there it's in jungle, which is going to be very, very easy. So if you look at the jungle mode in through there, I don't think it shows you the... Um, uh, it's, got, um, it's got different... It doesn't show you the cost of the logistics to actually break into a... Um, oh, hang on. Maritime logistical points entering hex without a port. Great. He has added it in. This has just come in now. And so there's a negative 43% reduction onto a, uh, onto a maritime landing zone without a port. We do actually have a port, so that I don't think that that one applies initially. I'm not sure. So we have to be careful of our ports. Actually, I think it does still apply. I think that from, from the AI's perspective, they have to, if they were invading that, they would have to pay the cost of getting across the ocean and then also have the cost, the negative 43% reduction in what they do. Now, that's for the majors. The, the major factions have to pay that. And I think the miners do as well. But... There are also marauders uh, that get that can just land. And they're like Vikings, and they don't pay that cost. But that is it, this was a, 30, a negative thirty three percent previously, so that has been changed. That's good. Uh, we're going to need to get people down there to support that. Uh, back in through this side, let's have a bit of a look. We do actually have um, Tatara, which is a minor minor faction, and that will then have there'll be another city in there somewhere else. Back over through here, we have a non-aligned force. And up through there, on the assets, we've got a mercenary post. This is going to give me another 300 recruits. Extremely useful. Like, this is extremely useful for us. This is a great little start for us. Um, <clears throat> this is all non-aligned forces in the top of this particular island. So, um, let's just go and see, make it so we can see our, our guys. The second infantry is mainly going to be made up of just infantry, just GIs. So I'm going to do this first bit fairly fast without sort of doing all my usual analysis. I'm going to leave the previous video up so you can sort of have a look at that one. I'm just going to really rattle through quickly with, um, with what we want to do through here and only focus on what's important. So I'm not even going to look at leaders or models or any of that sort of stuff. Let's just, let's just get into it. Uh, so we're just going to go across just so I can see what's going on. I'm just going to change the color. I'll make this one into like an orange color. So, and we'll update that way. It's gonna be nice and bright. And then these guys, you admin change color. We'll make these into like a more of a blue color, I think. <clears throat> and update that way. Oh, it's a bit close to our other color. It doesn't cost you anything to do this. Uh, I'll just go to a stronger blue. All right, so we can definitely see the two different zone, the two different groups that we actually have available, and we want these to sort of go off and um, and find wherever this is. What's that? That's not aligned forces. Okay, we'll push push up into this part of the of the island, and I want to get these in around that area very very quickly. Let's just move up so we can secure that road. Um, we'll move these on the road. Now, the artillery is, is much, much more important now than what it's ever been before in the game because they can actually hit creatures that are in the, uh, long, in the actual ocean if you need them to, as can your airfields, your aircraft as well. So not that it matters much, they don't do anything, but there are amphibious uh, creatures as well, which we, have, we may have to be careful of. Now, this one here, I do want to go across and... Um, well, I need to get one of them down to here. I need to be on that position with some forces, but probably more than what we're seeing there. God, we're still not getting across here much at all. I'll, I will move this one down just to sort of give a presence. Actually, that's a big number there. I probably should have moved that back the other way. Um, these are important. We've got a farm over through this side. That's just an agricultural farm, and we have a um, metal mine back in through there as well. 
I, did, I need to be having units positioned on here, plus we need to be back on our own territory. Let's have a quick look and see if this one's going to be any good. Operational range of four hexes. <laughs> so this is useless. We thought that was going to be the case. Uh, four hexes. I'll be able to see what's in here. That's about it. So forget that one. We're just going to go straight into here. We're going to do mass scrap. And so all of these same sort of units to the SHQ, just scrap them. We get all that stuff back. That one's now been dis that's disappeared. So that means we no longer need our airbase because the, the air, like airfields and, and aircraft are just not going to be of any value on this particular planet, which is fine. Um, we can bring them out if we require them. We're going to uh, close this one down. So we're not going to mothball it. We're going to actually close it. That means we're not going to pay anything. Um, I noticed that there's people are missing from some of the areas uh, as well. So uh, that, that may correct itself after a turn. So we'll just see that, how things do, do work out there. Uh, we're going to keep all of the... Uh, I'm, I need to expand quickly. So we'll just move everything back up this other side. <clears throat> now, do we have... We don't have a real clear way... I'll just go up and try to pick this one up as well, just with some of these militia forces. Okay, so that's pretty much all we can do this first turn. New organisation. I'm just going to go with the with the no-brainer, which is the Economic Council. This will then give us cards to interact with the maritime trade houses, so that will be useful. Um, have a quick look in here, just to sort of get a bit of a feel. I won't explain too much. Just going to go to all, design, low. It's all, well, this doesn't matter. Uh, GIs are 93, that's low. Machine guns are okay. Recon buggies are good. Anti tanks are good. The um, page two, the um, average, and then below average for the tank. Leaders, we've got a fair few cap threes, which is not bad, actually. Not bad at all. Well, when we have an, a concern about something, which will be next turn, what's our advisor like? We are going to need somebody to fill the role. I'll do that when we get the when we get the person in to the next uh, next phase. We've got twelve political points, so we'll save them up because we may need to shuffle people around. But we'll do that. We'll do everything just on the fly initially. Now we've got four hundred and twenty-one credits in through here. Quite often, and our energy is actually still actually okay. So energy is is stabilised at this point in time. Food is going backwards, and that's I think is because we didn't have very many workers working in here. Needed twelve thousand, we got eleven thousand. That's not too bad, actually. That should, and this one should start to build, uh, like expand into here and create more and more food, which will be fine. So what we'll now do is we'll just go across and end our turn here. Uh, I think. Now, we've got the Odin Sea Maritime Trade House is down the bottom through there. Um, Fate Stratagem Packs, what did we get? I actually didn't check to see what my cards were. When I do race forward, I do tend to miss things. But it doesn't matter. Strat Cards, what have we got? We've got Nation. Oh, there's an increased income tax. We've got to try this one. If we can get this, this is a, um, this is a difficulty... This is not good. The administration role here is not good at all. Um, okay. There's negative sign means secretary is executing the stratagem there as a negative 25% penalty. Ooh, that's, um, no, this can be almost impossible. Okay, in that case, we won't do that one. Um, <clears throat> so we've got two pages there. The, I've got the chemical high and the bad rations, so I can get more if I needed to. Just go back to zones. We've got had the eager industrialist. We do want to go and put this onto our Torona location, so we'll go and execute that stratagem. Um, if we go back to the nation cards, bad rations, the morale of militia and troops is reduced with 20% and the fate points go up. Now the morale will pick up, so let's execute that stratagem now. And chemical high, random zone will get a increase in unrest. Let's do that as well now, the start of the game. Order unrest went up to 40. So it's a lot of unrest back in, in our capital, but it's the capital is fairly happy. So we are losing money. 
Um, really can't afford to sort of do that without a, a proper, a proper. Um, what am I trying to say? A, um, well, here we go, here we go, here we go. This is the little choke point. So we are on the big island, actually, on the largest of those islands. I'm pretty sure this is like that choke point that we'd seen. So we'll just keep these rattling forward. And that's the, um, that's uh, Rurijon beckons through here, the Rurijon city, which has got a transport hub and a farm. Um, you need this one. I do need to have like strong support on that particular location. So I'll keep that one there, and then we'll just move these up as well. We're seeing a bit more of the uh, of what's going on. Now we've just picked up ourselves this one over through here as well, which has just basically come and joined us, I think. If we have a look at the um, adventurers, discover special location. And so we've received a radio contract, uh, contact from Hex 1331. A private expedition has, by some of our people has established control over this special hex. They're requesting that we help th them to hold on to it. Yes, of course we will. It's That's a very, very easy one for us to do. So even though he doesn't want to do it, I'm going to go yes, because we do want it. Now, national budget decisions. I'm going to reduce the uh, this down to around about, say, 55, 45. Confirm that one. Um, new director for the Economic Council. Now, we, I'm going to, if we've got anyone that's of any, like she's only a cap one, I want a cap three in this role. Uh, what about Alberta? Cap two. But does have some skills, but just not going to, she's not, not going to learn them fast enough. So we've got 30 to move across. Let's just um, come back to that decision in, in just a minute. So this is right where we, you know, we've just, trundled on through here let's just press number one and we have a luxury brothel in through here so they're protecting the brothel this one's going to give um uh plus two extra morale growth um yeah so if it's in the same area as our troops our troops are going to get a little bit of extra morale they're going to they're going to retain their morale or gain their morale a little bit faster it's not a great one for us but it's uh, at least it's something let's just go up this way there's a creature Oh, there is someone that was on there, which is not good. So there's some sort of uh, creature in the in the side there. I don't know if I can get anyone else up that way. Um, just move them across. Well, hopefully it doesn't come back down to there now. I've got nothing that can go back up to that location. Bring them across just to um, just to expand. So, um, yeah, we're just going to break our way through the Mafaro ruins. Uh, we've now found the uh, Edelis ruins as well. So these are the old ruins from when the, uh, from when the city was, uh, you know, was, was essentially uh, settled and colonised. We can have a look at those in a little while, but um, it, it does give nice backstories as to what's going on. And we happen to start off in Sezonio ruins. Um, should we look at that? Yeah, let's have a look at that now. This, uh, this, we've got Mafaro. Uh, Edelis and Cesanio, if we have a look at their reports and we just go across the help area. By the way, this is also worth having a look at. Heavy Elements is lowish at 96%. Uh, there is a, uh, the, having a, a port will give us fishing, which is fine. So that one is edible fish. Uh, we have uh, no methane synthesis. And if we go across to the, um, actually we've got also how are we going? Yeah, Terran plants open sky farming. So we can sort of grow earth plant uh, earth plants here, uh, which is what we're sort of seeing around here with different farming groups. The overviews, actually, sorry, with the help file in through here, what was I going to look up? The history, that's right. So we want to have a look at the apocalypse. So um, just looking for names of places. So Vothera, uh, Aloro. Here we go. Survivors in Salorum, which is where we started, decided to give up the fight against the odds and committed mass suicide. So they drank the Kool-Aid, the ones where we sort of started. And uh, we're not seeing the other ones in through there. So we don't get any information about um, Mafario or any of these other places. That's okay. So um, we'll just continue on where we are. Two decisions. New director. Now, what we want to do in through here is just do a quick analysis uh, we're looking for technical skills and we're looking for, in this case, either inventor or science. Let's just go with science and sort by science. We've only got the governor of Tirona. It's a cap three. What about um, 
Inventor skills. We have an inventor there, reserve pool member Cleo, but she's only cap one. The cap is more important than nearly anything. Um, Marissa, cap three. So she does start off with some basic science skills. You know, I might move her out from there. So let's go and uh, let's go and take her out from that location. So we'll just go and talk with her. Call. We're going to relieve you. We're going to give you a uh, better job. This will then mean that she won't suffer too much. So that's okay because we're saying, yep, you're coming across. And then she then comes in with a, with a much higher suitability rating. So we appoint her into this very important role. Um, next term, we're then going to get an option now to then fill the role of the economic count. Uh, sorry, of the um, of of the governorship of Tirona. Now, as far as these are concerned, um, I'll explain why I'm doing this. But for the military research council and most of the research councils, except for the staff council, where you've got the option for discovery and research. Uh, bump one up more than the other, and usually it will be the um, you want the the research high, the discovery low, and the reason for that is if, if you're not researching, all of your research points get put back into discovery, and um, in fact, yeah. So you want this one, you want the research high, discovery low. That way, when it's time to research something, you've got a lot of points you can pu you can pump into research. Uh, let's just go with the maritime trade house liaisons. We'll leave them at twenty. Economic policies, we'll bring them down to, say, 15. Uh, prospecting, I'll leave that at, say, 15 as well. The um, And then these, I'll just take this one down to, say, 5. So we've got 545, and that means we're going to have a lot more of the bureaucratic points will then be split into uh, or put into um, research and discovery, with the majority of them being into research. Uh, for when we do discover a technology, we can then they can find out more about it so we'll go and confirm that one so that's a bit of a tip that's for the military as well um, for most of them except for the staff council now that was a problem I should have kept it back on there for a turn our money is going backwards and we do have 74 in here energy is going up so we can go to the trade and just see if we can sell off rare earths here we've got 27 at 12.98 Sell them early, if you can. So we're going to sell them for 350 credits. Also, our food is now coming up good as well. So we'll sell that. Usually the first one or two turns, you can sell things at a reasonable price. So let's go and do this one, another 348. We're not going to have the same abilities in the future. So we'll go and do that now. They've still got a little bit, but we don't want to sell anything else off. Uh, we are getting a lot of fuel on here. We don't know if there's good fuel to be found on the planet. What I might do is actually, I'm not going to be needing fuel for quite some time. Let's just put, put this down to low production just so we don't waste it. Uh, if we have extra fuel around on the planet, that'll be fine, but we don't know that just yet. Also, at the start, usually, if we go to trade for buying, machines are going to be at pretty much their lowest price. Um, four machines at 91. So it's going to cost me essentially 364 credits to get the four machines. I might... I'm going to sort of rely on the fact that I'm going to be probably finding machines. Let's just buy two machines. So we'll just go and buy those. And eventually what we're going to be wanting to do is to have a um, more buildings, actually. So let's just go back into here and just go back to construction. So um, and just hang on. Before we do that, everything is now working, I think, in terms of if we just have a quick look at the management screen, go back to assets. At Tirona, yeah, there's no there's no yellows there anymore. So we do actually have now people working everywhere. So we can actually afford to um, to go and build more. The more we build, the more we pay those our workers. So we've got to be careful what we do build. But initially, we want to get um, things that have low worker numbers. Uh, I would love to get to this one through here. The hospital is always a great one to get early. Uh, because we need to make happiness a priority in the in the uh, in the cities, and so hospital barracks, where you always generally start off with with something that's going to give us. You've got we've got the quality of life security points, and we've got the quality of life education points. What we don't have is the quality of life um, entertainment points, and we don't have the quality of life uh, health points. So usually, 
it's better to go for a hospital than a barracks because we've already got some of those. And yes, it does. You do have to spread these out to make to get the best bang for buck. Let's start construction of this one. What we want to do is we want to raise our civilization score, and I'll explain that when we get close to it. Actually, I'll explain it very briefly now. Click on this one over through here, which is your civilization score of the populace. It's the average of all of your regular zones. So this is a regular zone, not an not an unincorporated zone. So it's the uh, it's the civilization it's the average civilization score of all your regular zones is your civilization score. Now we need to get up to nine because what it is, it's the square root of the number minus one is the civilization score. We need, we need to get to level one, sorry, level two. Now one way of looking at this as well is that you'll see that it's, um, if we go back up to the reports and just go to the overviews, you'll see there the civilization level is 1.65. And, um, and so that is, if we added one to it, 2.65 should be the square root of seven which I do actually have a handy little calculator here. So let's go and do exactly that. So seven square root is 2.65. So essentially 2.65 minus one gives us 1.65. So it's the square root of the average of that number. We've only got one city that's a regular zone, so that's what it is. And that is a product of what happens with boosting up these different quality of life scores that we sort of see down through here. And so to do that, we need to have points in each of these to push them up. The quality of life score is actually, um, is what does it say down there? The, the high limit for the, quality, the design quality of life is the quality of life average across all four of them, plus the lowest quality of life score. So it's the average of, um, so it's essentially health, security, education, entertainment, uh, divided by four, so we've got to divide by four of each of those, uh, plus the lowest, which is zero, um, which you can see down there for entertainment is zero at this point in time. Uh, so it's uh, it's the average, then divided by two. So we want to make sure that the lowest still has some points in it to actually then raise that thing up. That's quite important. I hope that will make sense anyway. That's the um, it's complex. It is complex, but it is good. So we've uh, got all that stuff happening. Uh, these can't go anywhere. This one hopefully doesn't come back and take this and we then lose our, um, our word. Damn it, they took it. <laughs> I just saw them take it. Uh, we lost 100 infantry. Um, okay. Okay, okay, okay. So we're expanding. And that's going to then piss off the... Um, actually... We will be able to take it back again at some point. Now, we want to smash our way through here. Now, there's a good chance there's nothing in there. I think I'll still just rattle in. Great. We've been able to isolate this one. Now, it looks like there's uh, forces back in through there. Uh, we'll just keep on moving these up. And we'll let Blue deal with that guy. Well, orange deals with the others, the other side. And so we're just going to smash our way into here. Um, yes, yeah, so we've got someone that, on that hill there. I'm just going to keep these guys um, away from that. Move these across. Uh, everything else is looking good there. So they're back in there. This will just be some creatures that are swimming around in the ocean. Um, yep, that's all fine. Now we have a minor worker strike. Before we do that, we want, we're going to be appointing a governor. Now Cleo Waterman, she's cap one, so she's not great. Let's just go and see if we can find somebody else. Um, Alberta is cap two with some basic skills here. Intelligence isn't fantastic. Let's just bring in one more character. Recruit a junior. I don't think we've got any citizens. No, we don't have any citizens. So we'll just go and recruit the junior. Um, and was he any good? No. It's Boomer. Zonium. Cap 1. Useless. <laughs> Useless. So I think I'll go with the Cap 2 because she will learn... Um, in this role. So we'll just go and place her. Cleo, 
<clears throat> does have some skills, but really the, the overall intelligence and charisma is low. So she's going to be not good. Uh, we can start with Alberta. We can always move her somewhere else. And we can actually upgrade the city. Now, the upgrades, this is a double-edged sword. But what the same thing as what we're looking at through here. If you have a look at the actual quality of life scores here, and I just hover over there, this is based on the health points we end up having over here. In fact, let's look, let's look at security points as an example. So the security score is based on security points. The quality of life points get divided by the city level to arrive at the quality of life score. And these are not hard numbers. There's other little things that sort of push them up and down a little bit, and it, it, it tends towards that level. As does the quality of life score, this tends towards whatever that level might be. So even if you get like a lot of points in there all of a sudden, it doesn't immediately bounce up. It does take time to get up to the next level. So it's a, it's a bit of a, 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 a slow boil. It's the, it's the frog in the, uh, in the blender type thing where we slowly ramp up the speed. Um, <laughs> or is it in the boiling water, the saucepan, or whatever it is, whatever the, frog, whatever the frog's doing is whatever it's doing. It's doing it slowly. And this is what happens in through here. Uh, and this also, then t tends to pull itself to whatever the quality of life is pushing itself to. So we have to manage this. And this is why we need to find one in each of these areas and keep on focusing on that. And that why actually, why are we doing that? In the, in the, whole, the whole reason for doing that is if we, um, and I'll come back to that particular uh, question that it just had. The whole reason for doing this is if we go back to construction, go back to government, the name of the game is bureaucratic points. We want these 200 points in through here. So that's what we're actually looking for. And the 200 points require us to be at civilization level two and at city level two. So we've already got the city level two um, requirement. We just need to get to civilization level two. And the only way we can do that is to, is to manage that with the, um, with the quality of life in through here. Wow, my mouse has just all of a sudden become very, very responsive. Um, <laughs> it's just tiny amounts. So anyway, I'll try to figure that out. We're, near, we're at the end of the episode anyway. So this is why these are important, uh, because we need to get bureaucratic points. So it's a long convoluted chain. Bureaucratic points are what's used to then give to the different councils. And from that, we then get our research and we get ahead in the game. And that's, so that's really, really important. All right. So we've got those um, happening through there. Uh, what else do we want to do with that one? So yeah, so with the uh, with the decision making, uh, upgrading to the major to the minor city means that instead of having fifty divided by three, the size of the town, so city is level three, so we've got uh, fifty divided by three is giving us this sort of seventeen figure. We now divide it by four if we go to the fourth, uh, like we go one up again with in, and go to the next level up. But the difference also is we then get more population coming into the city. So it actually, it draws in more people to actually come and live in the city. So it's a bigger city. And so there is actually this situation of, do I want to be focusing on trying to get population growth or do I want to focus on trying to get the, um, the high civilization score as fast as possible? And I used to think civilization score was the better way to go personally, but now I personally now go for, for growth. So I will upgrade if I can. So um, it's one of these things, if I was really close to the nine, and, and I'm not because this is going to go backwards. Um, this is not going to stay there. It's going to, it's going to tend towards what are the quality of life it happens to be. So we'll just go and upgrade. And that means that it's then going to be the next turn. And we'll have, actually, I will end the turn here. Uh, minor worker strike. Now, I don't want to give in. I'm just going to send in um, a military force. I don't want to ignore the, the protests. We've already got like very high unrest. Uh, I think I'm going to have to go with this one here, use a military force. So we did actually succeed there. I don't have a real lot of, uh, of people actually left back in the city itself. But anyway, that's I might just move this one back in as well, just to try to get, the, uh, get that down. Uh, we want to move that one up. Uh, they're all okay. Um, so everything is actually pretty good there. So we'll just end our turn and we can then have a look and see what happens in through this side. So we'll just end our turn here. here my mouse is... I don't know what I did. I must have pressed a button on the side of it accidentally. Start the turn. Fuel deposits. They've got a maritime a, a trade representative. We'll do that in the next episode. 
Uh, we found the power plants. We found some uh, ge some galactic grade infantry. Now these are interesting um, for invading. <laughs> this is now actually a, an interesting sort of little group that we do find. Uh, there's another 200 as well. So we've got 400 in total. That's actually fairly good. Advancing troops found a stockpile near Irvan, Irvan in the uh, zone Torona. Uh, so 249 metal. I want machines more than anything at this point in time though. Um, so we did find them in different zones. When we, when we come across a, a, like a, a little a free city like this, we end up finding the, um, like we've got the chance to, f to discover things. And so we've discovered things in each of these locations. And two of them happen to be these Galactic Republic grade forces. And these ended up, these have got like special weaponry. And so these come in with laser rifles and combat armor. And the benefit to it, and I'll explain this at the time, but the big benefit to it is the weight of these is tiny because they, like most other, other groups, and if we go to, this one here is the same size. This one's got like 200. This one also happens to have 200 rifle militia. It's actually, this one here, the weight's not super bad, to be honest. But anyway, the, uh, the supplies, it does calculate the ammo and the food. These guys here, with their energy, don't that doesn't kick into it. It is literally just the weight of the unit plus the um, plus the food supply. So it's it, and the, so the, the they are smaller. So for invading, they are actually fairly good, and that can make a difference. So anyway, that's a good thing for us. Anyway, guys, so we're going to have a quick look back at um, at Torona, and we'll have a quick. You see that these are now trending downwards to sort of make it down towards the. Um, Towards the 12, 12.5 essentially is where they're going to be sort of heading down to. The um, health score, sort of, the, it'll blip around a little bit. You can see the quality of life score is now stabling at four. We need this one up, at, like, like up, you know, in the, in the high numbers. Entertainment score, we still didn't get any other strat cards, I don't think. Just have a look at the zones. There's more education points. I might throw that into Torona. That's another 50 extra education points which will then help with the overall averages but this is very important that we that we focus on this uh, if I had have got a, a like a um, an arena or something like that with then we'd get the entertainment points but uh, and it's hard for us to get entertainment points through building health points is easy security points is easy we can build them if we go back to uh, just to finish this one off if we go back to Torona and have a look at the um, at the construction now Actually, sorry, if we go back to Torona and have a look at the assets. We've just finished the hospital, so that's going to now bounce up with 100 points next turn. And really, to, to fill, fulfill this one, I do actually have reasonable numbers through here. and I don't need to be using the industrial points or metal for much else on this particular planet at this point in time. So let's go back to construction at Torona and uh, go back to the government buildings and go and get ourselves a barracks. That way we're going to have even more coming through. I could also get this one as well, the uh, High Command HQ, which will give me a bit of a boost along. The thing I'm a bit worried about is the amount of energy that these things actually do take. But that would be a good one as well, uh, just to just to get this little boost along here. Maybe I'll do that instead. Let's do that. But getting the hospital is often a good one to get at the start of the game. Well, I'm going to leave it there, guys. Thanks for watching. I will catch you next time.